All right, everybody, welcome. It is Wednesday night at seven o'clock, so that means it's time for our weekly conversations with Cougars, and we have got a doozy for us tonight. My guest, I've been wanting to get him on for months. You guys have been asking for months. Dr. David Alford, one of the early quarterbacks, one of the, the heroes of the 81 team. David, good evening. Thank you for joining us, and I'm so looking forward to our conversation tonight. Uh, thank you for having me. It's, uh, it's been kind of cool when, when you invited me to do this and kind of go back and pull out, try to find. I had to look hard to find all my stuff and actually found an album and pilfered through it. Stayed up way too late last night looking at, looking at stuff. But awesome. it's a lot of good, lot of good memories. It, it is. And, and looking through those every once in a while, it just brings you back. Now, before we get into anything uh, of, of huge significance, I want to take you to 1978, your freshman year at Northview. Give me some songs that you remember from that time period that when you hear them on the radio now, it takes you back to that time. Do you have any particular songs? Oh, my goodness. Uh, it, was, it would have been in Steve Blunt's car real loud. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire, whatever that is. Yeah. yeah. Real loud. It's all, it, regardless of what it is, it's always going to be loud. And yeah. uh, speaking of a guy who's not real loud, but he certainly is a big presence, Charles Bronson has joined us. Hey, Charles, good to see you, bud. Hey, David, you were, you, were the, you were part of the very first freshman class at Northview. What did that feel like? What was that like being the first ninth grade class at the school? Oh, it was something. And, and you know, I came, it, it kind of, plays into my whole deal. I came over from Houston Academy. Mm -hmm. And so when I moved over and came the in that first freshman year, you know, all the shiny walls and everything, mm -hmm. um, you know, they did this. We did our spring training over at Rip Hughes Stadium and Colby and Bottoms Field when we were in the eighth grade uh -huh. for ninth grade football. And then you come over to uh, Northview and then I, I was ineligible. I, so I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get to play my ninth grade year, but right. I tell you what, it was, it was exciting. It was clean and new and new people. And the, the, uh, it, it the people from Dothan, you know, the young junior with Gerard, mm -hmm. the, all that somewhat, uh, but you know, it worked. It, it was a, it was a really a cool thing. You know, Houston Academy back then wasn't nearly the size building wise or, or population student wise as it is now. What was it like transitioning from a, a 2A school? I assume it was 2A back then to the big 4A school, the junior college like campus. What was yeah, that like? I'd, I'd never seen so many people in my whole life. <laughs> there you go. So, well, certainly, certainly you knew some of the guys, at least. I assumed you competed against them in, in rec sports or knew them from other avenues didn't you oh i did that we had a good a good crew of, of folks that i'd known from baseball and uh the bombers and playing football with the bombers and all all sorts of there, there was there were so, a lot of friendly faces in there a lot of new ones that's mm -hmm. for sure I, you know i i may have been about the only northview football player who didn't play for the bombers everybody yeah. i have on this show at one point or another Played for the Mendums. Played for that right. awesome, awesome program. Well, you know, I, I figured out real, real quick playing for Ronnie Mendham mm -hmm. that football was tough because you had to learn how to play with Copenhagen in your eye. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's no, there's, you know, he'd grab you right here, and next thing you know, you couldn't see out of your right eye. You know, if why didn't you blitz? Well, coach, I couldn't see. You know. <laughs> There was a fog. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, David, we've got some more folks who've rolled in. I want to say hey to Tracy Kaziah Daniels. Uh, let's see. Some of these have rolled through so quickly. As they pop up, I'll let you know who's who's there. Yeah. But Tracy, thank you for stopping by. I still want you and Rosemary to come on the show sometime soon. Uh, so, David, your, your ninth grade year, you're not eligible, but you're practicing with the team. Who were who the ninth grade coaches that first season? Uh, that I'm glad you asked. Uh, I remember uh, Coach Tribute, Coach Trib, mm -hmm. and uh, I I can remember. You know, we had uh, 
well, um, one little story that when, when we mentioned Coach Tribute, we had Danny Palmer on our ninth grade team. He, he actually did, couldn't finish play, and he was a monster. Um, I think he wound up, I've seen him worked in the hospital for a while, but he was about six, seven. And old Coach Tribute would, I can hear him say it right now, Palmer, Palmer, you're too high. You're too, well, his legs were, you know, yeah. He, I could pr run through them, you know, and here he, he's trying to get low. But that <laughs> that's on one of my list of funny things to trip Coach Tribb saying, you're too high. You're too high. There's no way that man's going to get any lower. Uh -uh, there was just nobody his height to, to compare. David, yeah. did you guys practice down in the bowl? Um, you know, I don't really even remember that. Uh, I probably so down on that baseball field because mm -hmm. the varsity would have been up on the on the top. And it's it's not. I mean, I understand that if you blocked it out, it's trauma for everybody who practiced down there because there's yeah. no airflow. There's no. It's just rocks and crap down there. Uh, how about Coach Kirkland? Was he a ninth grade coach back in? The, he, that that's time? right. Actually, actually, he was he was the head coach. Mm -hmm. He was a quiet man. Oh, never got too upset about anything. Now, with you not being eligible, how much did they let your quarterback or what position were you, were you working out during the season? I was working out at quarterback, but uh, it, it, we didn't uh, – the, the other guy – and I really don't remember that much. Uh, I don't remember that much about uh, any of the details of that. I do – yeah. It, and I know you played other sports, but was football your favorite? Was it your best sport, or did you prefer other ones? I played football and baseball with uh, Coach Johnson, and um, that was uh, that was a lot of fun. Again, of course, I couldn't play that till I was in the tenth grade. Right, but, but did you know, get... both of those both of those teams were very good. Both of them organizations were very good. Ted McClendon, Scott McClester, some of those guys, you know, they went a long way. They they certainly certainly did, and it really set the tone. Bubba had had coached Dothan High, if you, you may remember this, in the spring of 78, they won the state title at Dothan High. And then he comes over to Northview to take over that program. That's right. Now, did you ever get thrown into that nasty creek back there behind the school, behind the baseball workout facility? No, I can say I, I missed that. I, I don't recall that. We had to do the, the Cougar Alley. We had to do that. I remember that fondly during the running up and down that hill and uh, during two a days uh i don't know how long that went on but that was not fun uh, it was it was going on into the 2000s because by go. the 2000s david that hill they had worn such a snaked path of so many years of using it but coach josh parish who was coach one of coach parish's sons when he took over the program in like 16 or 17 they were still, he had vivid memories of them still doing that. Uh, yeah, I remember that was not, that was not fun. No, some horrible things still, you know, traditional ones still main, <laughs> maintained. But, you know, we, I do remember that when we had during the two -a days, this is definitely showing my age, when it came time for water break, they had a, a whatever, five gallon bucket or something and a soup ladle. <laughs> and they'd go down the line and 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 by the end if you got at the end it was half grass Ooh. i mean there was it was just bad and now, you know you didn't get water marty mathis talks about honey water do you remember honey yeah. water yeah that was dr patterson that was out uh scott patterson and uh kurt's dad who was a chiropractor a very holistic guy and he uh concocted that stuff and looking I, I don't know what all was in it but it had honey and cider vinegar and uh, it just all god awful that we all had to drink a big solo cup of it uh to, to prevent cramps oh my gosh now that was on game day they saved that good stuff for game day oof You've been an orthopedic surgeon for, for years now. At what point did sports medicine change from giving salt tablets or whatever that nasty concoction was to now in 
Gatorade and, and water breaks and things. When did all of that switch? Uh, yeah, that, that, was, that, was, that was pre-Gatorade. My, 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 my dog has found a turtle, I think, out uh -oh. there. I apologize. <laughs> That's okay. So pre that was pre Gator, and I guess it would have been in the mid mid eighties, about the time I was coming through. And I'm only I'm four years younger than you. You graduated in eighty two. I came into Northview the fall of eighty two, so we just missed each other. And then we just missed each other again by being neighbors. Our families moved next to each other at Fox Ridge, but we had both flown the coop by that point. But I certainly have, have known you. We've known each other for years. Your brother Thomas uh, has been a friend. But, oh yeah, David. Well, I want to this. Did did y'all have did y'all have the turd squad? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Y'all were the turd squad. Well, I want to tell you, you know, when you look back and I, you know, I've kind of reflected a bunch here this last week or so, but um, when we would line up as the 10th graders, you know, the, whatever the JV squad was going against some of the guys that we had to go, I don't know how we survived it. Danny Carmichael, the, the Danny Carmichael, Kirk Patterson, Gene, you mentioned Gene Houston. I remember if you ever got out in the corner, his he he took no pleasure than to just take your head off. And uh, I was talking to Joseph Johnson the other day, and you know we were kind of mentioning that Andy Johns. Uh, that those guys had beards. I mean, they were big. It. I mean, it hurt. It wasn't even, you know, it wasn't whether they were going to tackle you. It's how much they were going to get you much, you know how much they and were going to make it hurt <laughs> oh yeah but you know that and you, you go against that mm -hmm. um and they and they're going full speed you you're either gonna sink or swim and then you also really kind of bond together and i think that it, it, um daddy fat greg mathis you know mm -hmm. trying to run an option against jimmy lewis uh some of those big guys yeah. uh it it was it was something, and I'm sure everybody has those stories. But oh, we uh, we all do. And, and, and Joseph, when you Joseph were... was Joseph was talking about trying to tackle Doug uh, White Jones. You know, uh, just that. You know, that guy went off to um, Coffee County in Kansas and mm -hmm. broke Mike Rozier's yeah. records. Yeah, uh, and here we're having to try to deal with that stuff every day. It was you know, amazing. It, it, what's remarkable to me is if you look at how well Dothan High did in 74, 75, 76, Stu, two, twice made it to the state finals, lost to Mountain Brook, lost to Homewood with Stedman Sheely at the helm. Then the schools split after the 77 school term. Could you imagine with the, the amount of athletes that were in those grades your first years, had Dothan High School remained one school, what kind of damage they would have done for the next several years? Oh yeah, Marcus. I remember Marcus Hill and some of those guys were just, that were at Dothan High. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just kind of amazing. Uh, you're right. It's it's an amazing thing, and you know now with this this with the with them joined together now, I honestly say, uh, and, that, and I just read that their coach just resigned, uh, coach Grider. Uh, so I, you know, I, they, I just hope, I hope that it, it works, you know, I hope it can pull together and go. I, I do too. I do too. And that's, I want to, I want to pause that because that could be a whole conversation for another day. I meant to ask you earlier, when you transferred in from Houston Academy, do you remember what led you to wanting to leave HA and come to, to Northview? Oh, there, there was no, when, when I found out there was a new, uh, a new brand new high school mm -hmm. that, you know, that I could go in as a, that it was, I'm, I'm that, you know, there was no question, you know, I wanted, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to go to the big school and the, um, I was at Heard, you know, I did Heard Elementary, and then uh, I was over at Houston Academy just for a couple of years in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, I think. Um, but yes, I, I, I was very up on going to Northview and uh, was really looking forward to, to doing that. Did it create any uh, 
animosities or jealousies with your HA friends who stayed? Nah. No. Well, most of it, most of us came. Well, that's what I was going to ask. Yeah. I figured it was almost big every, pre pre predominantly the people that were in in the city mm -hmm. uh, came to Northview or or Dothan High at that point. Well, I don't I don't mean to skip around on you, but I want to let's go back to tenth grade. Now you're eligible. You're coming into the season. You're I assume you're strictly working out at, at quarterback. Who all is in that? that competition who's ahead of you who's behind you in there that, that was mike durden um me and brad kennington broadway broadway brad kennington uh and uh, you know i i remember when we were uh coach parish brought harry um stedman in to give us a passing lesson and uh you know to show us some drills how to do uh -huh. and he you know, who's the one that could do the drills the best was Brad Kennington. And, you know, he never, never. I was going <laughs> to say, didn't he end end. up playing linebacker? He, uh, or end, played yeah. uh, defense yeah. end. And I, I do find it curious that Coach Parrish brought in Stedman, who threw like two times a game. But that yeah. was the yeah. offense back Well, then. I think, he, you know, that's about what I did. I couldn't yeah. throw it um, 20 feet. You know, I didn't have your arm. We, you know, we just ran it. Well, what you had was blazing speed, and we're going to get to that in just a minute. But I want to say hey to one of your former teammates, Shane Cobb has just joined us. Hello, Shane. And, oh, uh, Damon Glasgow, who's, who's much younger than both of us, has joined us as well. So welcome, guys. We appreciate it. I'm talking with David Alford, one of the quarterbacks in the early part of the, the Northview system and program's history. And we're just kind of running – because I want to know – when you're a ninth and 10th grader and you're watching the varsity, you're watching the Mike Durdens and the Steve Entz, that those guys, I mean, that had to have made an awesome impression on you sitting in the stands, say ninth grade year, watching the varsity. What was that like as a ninth grader watching all that? Well, it was uh, as a, as about that uh, in my ninth grade, I was probably 140 pounds. So it was quite intimidating watching those guys. Uh, but you know, they were, uh, the, Imagine a, a running a backfield today that had Steve Ants and Dwight Jones in it. Just put that anywhere. That, I don't know how they didn't win it. I really, you know, you can look back, um, and I'm talking about the the year they were seniors, uh, and that it's amazing. Well, David, fall the very first season, Coach Parrish was a winning team, six and four. That's right. Your your sophomore year, y'all were nine and two, and that team right there probably should have made it further than it did. And we'll let you expand on that a little bit. Your junior year, seven and three, and of course, and we'll get to the eighty one team in a little bit. But you're right. The the just with Dwight and Entz and and Durden and all of those guys, it was instant athletes right there, ready to compete, and. It's amazing what they were able to do from the very first game. That's right. They were. They were. Uh, it, it was a. It was a tremendous batch of athletes on that team. And I. And to this day, I'll still credit whatever success we had was having to go against those guys. Well, that's that's where I was going with this. Four months after your freshman season ends, you've got spring training. You're now eligible. You're an, a, a ninth grader, but you're a rising. 10th grader, and now you're facing most of those guys uh, for the first time actually in pads the whole nine yards. That had to have been a little bit intimidating, but, but oh, I, I, it, I don't know. It, it was it was rough. It was rough. There's no doubt that, no, that, that started out with, uh, I remember the numbers, it was well over 100, mm -hmm. 115 or something. Mm -hmm. And they, we did a lot of Oklahomas and a lot of those, you know, it, and it it whittled it down. I don't know what our numbers were at the end, but uh, they made it real hard to find out who really wanted to be there. And at any point during the process, did you have any doubts you were going to stay and compete and oh, yeah. fight for a spot? I was going to stay. Mm -hmm. You know, there was that I wasn't. That it was. It's still a great. It's a great, great sport. Great people. Great coaches. Um, just there's some of the happiest moments that and, and fond memories that uh, 
that I'll ever, that I'll have. It truly is. Now let's go off the field away from football for just a minute. That ninth and tenth grade years, academically, how did it translate from Houston Academy over to the public high school? It it was not as challenging. Um, it was fun. It was um, there was a lot of really good teachers and um, some that w were you know, not, not as, not as quite as hard as they were at Houston Academy. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's all in learning how to get along with people and, you know, moving, finding your way in a big crowd. And, uh, you know, it, it was just, a, it was a great, great experience all the way around. Well, I was going to say coming out of the, uh, a private school bubble, if you will, much smaller environment, you're a much bigger fish. Uh, in that environment and then coming to the big school and it's just everybody's coming together uh, must have been from an act uh, from a social standpoint also a bit of an adjustment for for any student whether you played sports or or, or didn't belong to a, a program well I you know I, I knew a lot I was very fortunate and had lots I was never felt isolated or mm -hmm. uh, that was never an issue I mean I, we had lots we lived over that neighborhood you were talking about you know mm -hmm. there were nine of us in the same or eight of us in the same grade that lived on that same block mm -hmm. so it, it, we didn't have to worry about being lonely we what? just had to worry about staying out of trouble <laughs> well i'm going to ask you because the statute of limitations has passed for almost everything you're about to answer <laughs> but uh, one thing i did want to say or ask you when i came through in the fall of 82 outside the cafeterias were all the motorcyclists that's where they all parked and that was also okay. the smoking area right out outside. Back. Did out they have back. that back then? Uh, they, they was out behind, like behind the cafeteria toward the vocational uh -huh. area. Yeah, that was the, that was the foggy area. Yeah, <laughs> it was very foggy. I just remember I had to take I worked in the lunchroom one year and I had to take some of the trash out. I didn't want to go outside. I didn't know who or what was back there, but I just remember that's where they all got together to smoke and yeah. that's where they parked their, their motorcycles, all those guys. But here's the funny right. thing. You may remember Eric Myers, who was a backup uh, catcher behind West Whitfield a few years in between me and you. Eric rode a motorcycle. He was one of the least intimidating guys I had ever been. He was an awesome teammate, a great fella, offered for us to drive, ride his motorcycle, which I never did. But I just always had this preconceived notion that if you rode a motorcycle, you were a badass and you didn't need to be messed with. But Eric kind of, I guess, didn't uh, fit that bill. No, no, that, that's, those are, I, I hadn't thought about that in forever, but there you go. <laughs> well, guys, I do talking. remember Coach Parrish used to have us have, uh, he decided we needed to gain weight and we had, uh, we'd have to go buy two, two cartons of milk and they set up a thing in the in the lunch room with a bunch of blenders and put protein shakes in it at school. Now, can you imagine getting away with that these days? No, you know, not, not there's no telling what it did to our kidneys. But oh uh, you know, but it, it, everybody gained weight. We weren't told not to run. We had he tailored the whole thing to do an all power work, mm -hmm. uh, four four sets of four on. You know. Mm -hmm. or whatever it was to yeah. gain weight and you know it it worked but uh i remember standing in line with my two cartons of milk to get <laughs> to get our shakes at breakfast and and lunch or not bre at break and at lunch you know it, it's amazing how sports science has evolved in in 40 plus years but you're right i'm sure that you just shake your head it's just like what what were we doing back then do you yeah, ever we'll remember uh, preseason training and running and wearing, maybe wearing those, um, they look like garbage bags to help you sweat? Yeah. I can remember many guys wearing those. Running at look, the summer before my senior year, running and cut off jeans, Chuck Taylor tennis shoes without socks at noon. I just, at noon, that was when I was going to run my two miles to get in shape. How, you yeah. know, I don't, how, do you, how do you survive that? I don't know. You didn't know any differently. We didn't no. know any differently. And, oh, Slim says, we drank those protein shakes two times a day. Yep. That's Thank right. you, Slim, for stopping in. 
Slim's still, Slim's still taking them. <laughs> I know he's Slim getting a lot of golf. Good. Slim, Slim was the center. Uh oh. No, you're you're good. I'm getting a low battery thing here. Um, but Slim was my center. Mm -hmm. We had two centers. One was Mark Kingry, and uh, Slim when. Slam, if the play was going to the right, you took it on the right side of, you know, you could cheat. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, we had Mark on a few weeks ago, and he told some awesome, just some awesome stories about life in the trenches. And he, de he deferred to you about anything that went on behind him. But I do want to ask you this, David. You, you, had, you had just natural gifts of being fast and quick. How did that translate to the offense that Coach Parrish and Coach Andrews wanted you guys to run at that time? Well, it, it became, uh, you know, it, it, and I, I was, I did, I was fortunate to be around a bunch of players, and that cannot be understated. But if you, with Slim at center, and Big Jeff Farmer, who was about three forty at right mm -hmm. guard, mm -hmm. and then Larry Roberts at tight end. And you and a trip and Doug Jones at fullback. Mm -hmm. um, some they had to hit. I mean, you you can't not hit Doug Jones. Yeah. Yule Yule Jones. Yeah. And then, uh, and then you pitch off the you play the end and you got Woo Woo Parker. You know, so it was a strain. It, we strained a bunch of defenses, and it was. Uh, and it, luckily, you know, I, I got I got my share, you know, but uh, uh, it, that, that was a fun offense to run. Well, Doug has said more than once that you were so quick that by his second step, if he wasn't full go, he was he was behind. He was gone. You were gone. And he means that he meant that at the utmost comp, a compliment that it kept him it kept him on his toes. He was, he's a great man. I've run into him several times, uh, you know, and, you know, you look at him and, and he's just a, and he's, I'm so proud of him. He's just a great guy and a fond memories with uh, playing with him. And he joined me a few weeks ago. We had a fantastic conversation. I want to welcome the, the memory, the conscience and the knowledge of all things Northview. There's only one. And she still holds the record for the most views on this show, as Shirley C. says to tell you hello, David. All right. Tell her Shirley. I, hello, Shirley. Shirley makes it every week, and I'm so glad that she's there. And I also want to welcome one of my uh, classmates, well, a year ahead of me, Carlisle Morris, who ran track and was always a big supporter of the football program. Guys, I'm talking with David Alford, of course. We're in that 79, 80, and we're about, oh, can't forget, he always shows up. He sneaks in, Coach Randy Hicks. Says to tell you coach. hello, David. Hey, Coach. David, let's let's move past that that fall of, of your sophomore year. You're getting a little playing time on the JV, or maybe you're the starter at this point. But is there in your mind, are you going to have a chance to play any on the varsity level your sophomore year? Well, the my junior year. Is that what you're talking? Ask about my junior no, you're, year. You're so, I'm asking about your sophomore year when you're playing on. The I don't JV. think I. I don't think I graced the field my sophomore year. I don't. I don't. If I did, it was just a little mop up here and there. Um, but it it wasn't a whole lot. Um, that, well, that sophomore year was it was a loaded team, and they were nine and one until well they lost the final game. Uh, and that made their record nine and two. And it was a fantastic season for a program that was only two seasons in. I That's right. To, let's see. I wanted to find that last. It was against Baldwin County at Baldwin County. It was a 29 to 14 loss uh, was the last uh, game of, of your sophomore year. Then you move into your junior year. You guys are seven and three. And uh, Durden is, is the starting quarterback. Are you getting any playing time during your junior year? Um, hang on, I'm trying. We're having a little technical difficulties here. We're good. Um, I, got to, I got to play some my junior year. And um, 
you know, the, uh, the, the one that I'm remembering is, you know, I, I'm sitting there working around and do, doing all my stuff. And, uh, I remember that, uh, coach Parrish called me in and said, I, I want you to, you know, I was wanting to play varsity. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, I want you to play the JV game against Dothan high. Mm -hmm. And I said, JV, you know, this, well, I wound up having a, I think it was, it was kind of, a, it was a big game. <laughs> it was six carries for close to 200 yards. It was a, it was one of those everything, you know, and a John Kite was the fullback and uh, we'd just sit there and ride it into Kite and he was getting killed, you know, mm -hmm. and just giving it to him, giving it to him for three, 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 three. And then, I'd pull it and go, you know, and we, so I guess we played Monday or Tuesday. I don't remember what night it was. And then the next day coach Parrish called me and said, we're, we're going to get you on the field. <laughs> he saw, he saw the light, but David, I want to stay right there for just a second. I want to talk about that, the option offense, and you don't see it anymore unless it's with one of the military academies on the college level because everybody's throwing the ball, everybody's doing RPOs or whatever the newest hybrid of whatever needs, you know, what's happening now offense. But back then, that was king, running the, some version of the, op, uh, of the option or the veer or whatever you wanted to call it. That's what it was. And I want you to kind of share, because most of the folks don't know. If they've never been behind center, run those kind of plays, they don't know what that's about. I want you to just take a minute and talk about just a little bit of the intricacies of it and what made it so special. Now, granted, you had some awesome offensive linemen, you had some talented running backs behind you, but you're at the helm. The ball comes to you and you've got to make decisions. So what is it about that that was, was for you and you were able to do it so well? Well, the, the good thing is, is about, that's about the only offense I could have done. <laughs> I, I couldn't throw it 20 yards. Um, I had, you know, it just that I, I, that was not my game, but so the, you know, the, the, you know, Bear Bryant, that was his offense. And so he, you know, then we morphed into that. Uh, I, I actually, I think the, our freshman year, uh, it was Veer mm -hmm. and then whether it was, uh, soft, I don't remember when we started in our sophomore junior year with the wishbone. I don't remember when, when we started it, but by, uh, by sure, by the time we were at, uh, I think 10th grade, it was beer, mm -hmm. 11th grade. We, we may, I don't remember that. I don't remember. I don't really remember what it was, but the, um, you know, the key in the philosophy there is it's a ball control offense with big play possibilities. Mm -hmm. And that's what, if you can block, read, run, not fumble, uh, you should be able to have an eight minute drive and score a touchdown. Mm -hmm. Or you can play a couple of plays and break one and, uh, and you know, they, the fullback is, has to be tackled or accounted to first. And then uh, if, the ta if the tackle, you, you don't block the tackle. Imagine a, uh, an <laughs> offense nowadays where you don't block the tackle, but you just send your fullback to go take a defensive tackle and there's no wonder that that offense you know who's that guy at Georgia like a fullback's really going to handle that guy so it, it it's it is out the athletes nowadays are so much bigger and stronger I don't think it would you know on a consistent basis you're not going to be able to run it but um the, you know the tackle takes the fullback the quarterback pulls it then he has to read the end and then uh pitch it or go and and in your junior year it was mike durden was leading the the way as first string quarterback and you had woo woo philip braswell doug jones and oh there was this all america to be who ended up in the pros larry roberts was on the line at tight end so there was some there was some serious talent young talent being led i think uh, durden must have been a senior in 80 and then your he was year, a year ahead of me. Yeah, your year was in, in 81. But you had to have gotten a taste on the varsity level somewhat your junior year 
because by the time, and we're going to get to the 81 season now, you guys were, were full go, at, at least it appeared from the records book. But what was that like toward the end of your junior year, getting a little bit of taste of varsity level, and then you go into your spring, your junior year, about to go to your senior year. Did you have any inkling that this would be ultimately what many have considered the greatest team in, at, in Northview history? Yeah, I think there was a lot of excitement there. And, you know, when you get, uh, I, I remember, you know, when you get the little magazines and the, the Athlons thing, and I picked that up and was thumbing through it. And there's Larry Roberts in that Athlons magazine is a, it, I don't think they were stars then, but it's like, wow, he, he he's really that good, you know, <laughs> but um, yeah, you guys there, was just moved with Larry. there was, we, there were, we had a lot of seniors. Um, we had, uh, you know, the leaders on offense, leaders on defense. Um, and I, I, there was a lot of excitement going into that year. I think the expectations were high. As they certainly were, were very high, but, and, and to a man who I've asked this question, I want you to compare the practices, the daily practices going up against that defense on varsity versus Friday night games, which was harder physically and mentally for you? From, from when we were, when we were on the third squad versus the senior, is that what you're asking? I'm, you you just tell me, but yeah. how I guess what I'm I'm trying to ask is is just how tough was that was that defense led by Coach Griffin and and all of those defensive coaches had such great athletes on the other side and you guys are trying to make this offense work. It had to have, have made you better. Oh yeah, there's no question. Brent Gilbert, uh, you know the. Larry Roberts, uh, Scott Patterson, uh, uh, Aunt Joseph Johnson, Brad Kennington, uh, the Soul Patrol, the, you know, our, our whole defensive backfield signed uh, D1. Kershaw Bird, uh, Ty Whaley, um, Leon Morris, you know, those guys hit. Um, intercepted passes. It 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 was just uh, yeah. It, it was it was hard. It was hard running against our first defense. That's for sure. Now, did Coach Parrish a lot of times on Mondays or Tuesdays early in the week? By the time I came through, we were having scrimmages on the five or ten yard line trying to score. And depending on if offense scored or defense held them out, would determine who was going to run and how much they were going to run. But what I remember, and this is my question for you, is how just jacked up, how animated were those scrimmages when you had the ones on the ones or the ones on the twos, and you're fighting for pride and every ounce of turf or every inch of turf that you could get for your side of the ball? Do you remember those scrimmages? There was some jawing going on, that's for sure. Um, and it it was even, you know, there there was never a clear-cut winner. I, I do have one funny one, though, that when you're talking about animated and, there we you know, we used to have to do the old Oklahoma deal where there's one-on-one -on -one and then a back and a backer and hut go and what happens. <laughs> and I'll – this is one of the fun it, it's the it, it made everybody laugh uh, but Brent Gilbert was going against Mark Jablonski and uh, Jablonski was I think our left tackle a big boy and Brent was strong you know had a big career and, mm -hmm. and uh, Brent hit Jablonski with a forearm and it, it, it was there was a cracking noise. Well, it, Jablonski went down and uh, his whole face mask, except for one screw, was off. So, and he was, his bell was rung and he gets up and he's walking sideways and he goes, I got it, I'm going again. And he gets down in his stance and his face mask is swinging. <laughs> <laughs> and you, that's about as animated as I've seen the whole team. I mean, it was... Uh, 
I'm not sure how that, but that that was that was the, that was the kind of contact that we were. That was ex exemplary, but um, mm -hmm. you know they they were lively practices. That's for sure. Mm. I want you to talk about DJ Doug Jones in the, in the Oklahoma drill now that he's joined us. Hey Doug. Um, yeah, you didn't tackle him. He was he got it. He got and I and, and when we played, uh, I remember going uh, about Doug to his credit before we played uh, Prattville mm -hmm. uh, our senior year. There was and you talk about a game loaded with athletes. There uh, there was Pat Dye was there, Jeff Rousey was there. There was a bunch of coaches watching all the talent in that game. But leading up to that game. Um, we kind of put in a play for Doug and, you know, and he's, and coach Parrish said, if we get in this, you, you are getting this yard. You, you, you understand me? And Doug, said, yes, sir. Doug, do you understand me? You are getting this yard. And I never saw him not get it, you know, but he did. And that's how we, that's how we won that game. Well, he scored, he scored the, the winning touchdown in overtime that game. That's right. You remember. He had he a three-yard sure run, and Alan Lopez kicked the game winning – I mean, kicked the extra point. Y'all won 21-14 to 14 at Prattville. Well, you know, he, I think Coach knew if it was going to come down to some play like that, he knew who to turn to. It was Doug Jones. Before we hit the 81 season, I want to talk about leadership. At what point during your high school career – did you start taking on a role or recognize that you were now one of the team leaders? When, did, you, did you have a pivotal moment? Did you have a talk with a coach? What, what was that for you? And, and maybe you never really felt that. You just did that. But share a little bit about that, about leadership on a team, David. Well, the, the, that morphed. You know, we were we, – when we came you, – you mentioned early that right before the – spring training of our senior year mm -hmm. you know we really uh you know it's a it was a tier system those seniors were ahead of us mm -hmm. uh, so as soon as they were done it it just kind of came to be and i think that um there were leaders all the way across that offense all the way across that defense that uh, i remember that we punished if somebody jumped off sides on, uh, I remember an incident where somebody jumped off sides a couple times in a row and the whole offense had to up down or whatever it was or, or hit the hit the hill. Um, the, the guy got punished in the locker room after practice uh, okay. by, the, by the seniors. And the, I remember, you know, one of our coaches walking through and it's like he just turned around and walked out the room and let us do it. Mm -hmm. um, and the, that uh, nobody told us it just was the way it was then. But I, I think as a team, and you know, I, I was a part of the team, but uh, and certainly one of the leaders on offense. But it was it was a senior class that had a bunch of people that led by example. I think you're I think you're so right. And I think as an eighth grader, I, I you know, I'm just I'm watching guys like you and, and, and others from the stands, but that play team. first people that would play mm -hmm. when they didn't fit. Scott Patterson played a game with a cracked sternum. At his position, at any position, how do you do yeah. that? I, it, he, he got, he was out. He missed one game and came back the following week. Incredible. <laughs> it's just incredible. tough. It's tough people that I have Sweet. utmost respect for. Speaking of tough people, JJ, Joseph Johnson has just joined us. Hey, Joseph. The snapper. The snapper. And I, I, I still want to get him on this show sometime. He keeps showing up watching. He got time. I know that. So come on, JJ. Join me sometime soon. David, going into that senior year, your senior year, of course, there's high expectations. You guys are loaded on both sides of the, the ball. You've got a team mentality. You've got a lot of stars, but my question to you is, and you may not want to call anybody out or there may not have been any, 
there didn't seem to be a lot of prima donnas, or if they were, you guys as leaders kind of kept them in check. And I'm not asking you to name names. I'm just asking you, what was the vibe from a leadership standpoint about guys who were maybe getting a little too big for their britches or thinking they were bigger than the team concept? Was there any of that? We, we, we really did not have, I, I was not aware of that any, anywhere um, on, on, our, on our senior year. I remember coach, coach had some trouble or had some probably long nights when Dwight Jones was on the team. And, you know, Dwight was the, that stellar running back, but really didn't have much of a, of a, a home family set, set up. And I think coach was probably his second or his, close to maybe his dad. I don't know. It's it certainly the, and, and um, we had to, we had to watch and, see some of that play out and co you know coach Parrish, he he handled it and uh, nobody said it you know it was he started white you know but he handled it uh, but I you know I didn't see we didn't have any any uh, our, our year that anybody needed to be put in place or uh, from a uh, at me, me, me standpoint, it, it just didn't happen. And I think that was one of the keys about this team. The team just, it seemed like there were a lot of stars, but everybody who kept everybody else in check, everybody did their business and handled it quite, quite admirably. Now I want to talk about, I want to talk about the rivalry with Dothan High. Brand new school. We're only in our fourth year as a program and a school. Did you hate those guys over there? Did you know those guys? What was the, I knew was them the all. Huh? <laughs> I knew them all, you know, that, that we played baseball together and over at Doug too. And, um, Lee Ray Marshall and, you know, Jeff Thomas was the quarterback, mm -hmm. um, for Dothan high and he blew his knee out the week or two weeks before I did. That may have been the opening weekend. Wow. And he came to see me in the hospital. You know, wow. it, it's so, there may have been a rivalry, but it certainly seemed like there was a lot of respect there. And, as they, well. and that year, they only had about 40 kids. Mm -hmm. They did their, their team was small, but uh, yeah, asked Brent Gilbert. He's that was his that was the worried, the most worried he was all year. He said this time and time again, I was already hurt by then, mm -hmm. but uh, he said that was the game that worried him the most was Dothan High. Well, I'm not so sure Dothan had, let me see, I'm, I'm trying to find it. It was, a, obviously it was a 10-3 win. Um, Lee Ray Marshall and uh, Spanky yeah. Thomas and, mm -hmm. uh, oh gosh. I don't know what kind of record they had, but I know they were wanting to, to throw a wrench into the Northview season by that point, that's for sure. They were tough. Yeah. Well, David, let's, before we really in earnest get into this season, I, I, again, the statute of limitations is, is long expired. And this, whatever you say next, may or may not impact anything else that you do the rest of your life. I want to know where were the fun places for you guys to go and hang out when you weren't practicing or, or, or studying or doing the right things you're supposed to be doing? My funniest story on that, well, it, and it was actually, uh, after we had won and and we had finished our we'd won the uh, championship and of course I had C lunch and two periods of PE right so after fourth period you're done right and so Brad Kennington and I were um, decided we were going to go deer hunting and so here we had the hunting equipment in the back of my Toyota Celica and um, in the, and we uh, kind of skipped out to lunch and hopped in the car and we're driving around the corner and we pulled around right by the front. Instead of going out that way, we came by the front and I'm turning around the corner, putting on my camouflage and there's Dr. Smith and I slammed on brakes and ooh, you know, and he literally put his palms on the hood of my car and he came around and said, boys, 
what are y'all doing? And I said, we're going hunting. <laughs> what could you say? Yeah, yeah. Well, drive carefully. And he stand back and no, away we went. But that immediately came to mind. That was his trick, trick question, but that popped out. So there you go. Well, you clearly had had some some cachet at that point. Yeah, well, you know, it was. Uh, we deserved a lot worse than that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. What about the the place that was popular my my day, the Cement Pond? The Did Cement Pond, Ron Watson's place. Uh huh. Uh, the power lines. Uh huh. The Dothan Country Club parking lot. Uh, really i didn't know that was a spot <laughs> it was that's so funny isn't it amazing that pre-internet pre-cell phone all that how much simpler and i know we're sounding like old dudes but how much simpler things were to to just do and go and and be and gosh miss those yep. days sissy carol reynolds says to tell you hello 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 and guys, of course, I'm talking with David Alford. We're just running through some good old times. we got a few more minutes, and I appreciate David sharing some stories. But we got to jump into the 81 season in, in earnest. And all the prep work that you did, you're getting ready for the season. And let's talk about those first couple of games, David. Do you remember? Was it a nervous energy? Did you have any nerves? Were you just jacked up, ready to go? What was it like? leading into your senior year, leading this tro these troops and what was starting and was going to be such a promising season when you first started? Oh, I think we were all ready to go. I think there was – we played Ozark mm -hmm. uh, to start, and um, I think it was a lot of nerves, but I, it was kind of a slow game to start with. Uh, I, I, I do remember this about that game is on the first drive, uh, Jerry Andrews, coach, the offensive coordinator, said, Dave, you know, this is the option. You, you can pitch it. <laughs> I think I was ready to go. but uh, Well, you must have we, because at yeah. some point, Doug Jones actually scored a touchdown. He was the first score of the year. Yeah. Uh, he was in the first quarter, seven minutes. He scored. Then he didn't, nobody scored until the third quarter. And it looks like you actually threw a touchdown pass to Larry Roberts. My, the one in my entire career, yes. Do you remember Larry the play Roberts. at all? He was a fine target now. If, if you can't throw one to him, he really uh, – so there you go. But, yeah, that was my one touchdown pass. Rumor has it even Jeff Farmer could have found uh, Larry open in the end zone for that throw. That's probably true, yes. In the fourth quarter, we got Ron e – oh, Ron Ely. With, Ron uh, Eli, yeah. I, I'm sorry, not Ely. Eli, sorry, Ron, if yeah. you're watching this, but I know it's Eli. Uh, he scored, and then Marcus Paul, 87-yard run in the fourth quarter. When we're running out the clock. Mm -hmm. He was uh, – you know, that was just with the time expired, but you weren't going to tell him to kneel down. So yeah. I'm sure Coach Parrish had words for him, just knowing how Coach uh, is about sportsmanship. You take on the next game is that tough game at Prattville where Doug scores in overtime. Y'all win that one. Then, and I'm telling you, they were – Sidney Lanier was a thorn in Northview's side every year. That's the one blemish. you you got to remember this game, 28-24 loss at Sidney Lanier. Yeah, that, that was just a, um, a complete collapse. Um, and that, that happened uh, – I think we got out 17 – to nothing um but it was it was a scoop and score i think brad scooped one it wasn't because we did a whole lot on offense i think they gave us a couple of easy ones and then they got maybe we got complacent or something i i actually threw i guess they'd watch the tape on the ozark game because we tried that pass to larry and i think their whole team collapsed on the ball and intercepted it and or hit. I remember the first one they killed him right when I threw it he got and the ball popped straight up and somebody picked it up and intercepted it um and then there was actually two and then there was a pick six 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and I remember that guy ran right out. I got knocked over. I got hit when I threw it and then got knocked over and the guy ran right over me. I remember seeing him run right, right over me, uh, insult to injury. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's, you know, that, 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 and that was a Thursday night. Mm-hmm. And that was, uh, then we had to come back and of course, bit back at school in Crampton Bowl and mm-hmm. had to come back and, uh, go to class. And I, I'm rem- I may be exaggerating this, but we practiced and practiced and practiced whatever you could practice that weekend. Um, and, and, uh, then, and then we had to go to Crisp County, uh, well, the following week. I was just getting ready to ask you with that gaming on a Thursday and such a, a, a bad loss four, four points, but it was the first loss of the season. I bet that Friday and maybe Saturday or Sunday practices was not it, fun. It was not fun. And they ran, they had run some kind of a weird, uh, six two defensive front that we had. They, they did a, they, to their credit, they mm-hmm. messed us up on the blocking schemes and that sort of business. One thing that, that, and so on that weekend, they lined us up. We had to run and learn because we, we Coach, coach was pretty smart. We knew we were going to see that defense again if it was that effective at messing us up. And uh, and the other thing that came out of that game is they that's that's when Larry started playing two ways. That's mm-hmm. when he went from just being a tight end to being a, a defensive tackle. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that uh, and and that you know that was a making that move was. Uh, without a question, a key maneuver to our success the rest of the year. Yeah, with but when we, the cool thing is when we went out there to play Crisp County mm-hmm. over in Cordell, Georgia. You know, we they were they were ranked in the top five in Georgia when we played them. They dimmed the lights. Uh, they did the ice first time I'd ever seen dry ice when the team came on the field, and they huh. did this chant ooh, 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 you know this real yeah and i'm sitting there warming up or about to start and saying we are about to run into a buzzsaw here uh, but you know we played with them and uh the, but the first time we went out there to play there's that the left side of the defense they they lined up in that defense that lanier had Mm-hmm. And I and I almost started laughing. I said, "We got this." And I checked right into that side, uh-huh. and I said, "Let's all right. That's that's the linear, you know. That's the linear linear front to the left. Here we go, you know." And yeah. we went right at it. And I think Ron Eli went for thirty on the first play. Yeah, well, you that's know? so. It, it was kind of cool. I you you just you gosh, there's so many questions. Running that type of offense. What kind of freedoms or abilities did coach, and you just answered part of it, did coach give you when you got to the line of scrimmage to audible? Because it wasn't well, very we did, often. Before that game, you know, we, we had, uh, you know, we had the green or red, I think. Yeah, red, red was the hot color. Mm-hmm. And you basically, we would just swap the side. Mm-hmm. You know, if it was to the right, would you just re- find the su- strong safety and go the other way? But mm-hmm. I di- didn't do a whole lot of changing them around, other than uh, I think a couple of times that you know, if they didn't line up completely right to a quick pitch or something. Uh, but it, it, for the most part, they had us all lined up. The other cool thing after after Lanier, um, Coach Andrews put in the bro- put in a broken bone. Mm-hmm. And did uh, wing backs and and motion and no huddle, and so from then on it was hand signals, mm-hmm. and uh, everybody would look over there and get the play from Coach Andrews, mm-hmm. and then we'd just snap it. Now that I got to play about a half of that, but well, I was there. You I go. Was getting ready to to ask you a little bit about Crisp County. They score first, then DJ. Actually, 47-yard fumble recovery return. So he's playing some defense at oh, this yeah. point. Then Doug scores on offense later in the same next quarter. But at what point, because this is the pivotal game in your senior year, 
that changes the direction of, of you personally, your sports career, and the Northview season. Can you take us to, to some of what you remember from then? Well, that, that, that somewhere after that, right there is when I got hurt. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was a. I'm, yeah, I'm fairly certain it was a, it was the second quarter, mm -hmm. and they had um, we I had those big turf plates, you know, the ones that were about an inch long, mm -hmm. and their their field was so perfect. You, you think Cordell would be a, a goat ranch, but it was it was this beautiful manicure, and the, you're you're standing up on top of it like a putting green, and then all of a sudden your plates would go in it. Mm -hmm. And that's really what happened. And I remember that we um, we had a uh, somebody had a big play, or I, somebody did a, a nice run, and they called it back because my back chin strap was off. My, you know, the double chin strap and my one, and they threw a flag for illegal thing, so it backed us up, whatever ten. Mm -hmm. And so it, I was angry, and so then we ran ran an option to the left. And uh, I pulled it and it was just, you know, one of those moments when you look and it's just a perfect cut. And I went out to the left and tried to cut under the linebacker and boom, my right knee went out and uh, I actually blacked out and I woke up and here's Doug Jones and uh, Larry Roberts looking up, you know, man, you all right, you know, you all right, get up, man. And they were cutting my pants off and uh cutting my leg out uh so and, david you cut left but hurt the I, right you know I, I was i planted i was going left i turned right mm -hmm. planted my left foot mm -hmm. planted my right foot and my right knee went out so it was it was it was a non-contact injury non non-contact well i say non-contact you weren't hit it was just the ground planted when, yeah when you got hurt did you know immediately that there was something well, pretty no, bad? I, I mean, I literally blacked out. Mm -hmm. I, I went, it knocked out, and I, I kind of then kind of woke up and was uh, laying there on the ground. And literally, the first thing I those was those two good looking good looking faces standing right yeah. there. Hey, man, get up! What what you know? <laughs> and was did would did Northview have a team uh, doctor at that point, or were you being no? That, it was Wayne Paskey was the uh, came out. He was the uh, trainer. The ambulance mm -hmm. came out on the field, mm -hmm. and they had started putting a splint on. And I said, "Where where y'all? Where are they? Where are y'all taking me?" And they go to Cordell County Hospital, and I said. I'm not getting in that. I am not getting in that ambulance. And mm -hmm. they've kind of looked at me and they said, well, we've already put a splint on me, on you. And I said, I'm not getting in that ambulance. And McCaskey pulls out his scissors and cut the splint off. <laughs> and they picked me up and they carried me off. You can't do that. You can't do that. And they took, took me over to the sideline and I rode back to Dothan in a police car. Wow. So, was your mom with you, or did somebody? Oh, she was. In, she was in the front seat of the police car. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think she was. She was. Uh, it was a tough night. I'm sure that it was. It was a defining night in in your life. I'm sure. Um, now your backup at the time, I'm assuming, was Dickie. Oh yeah, the, the, and Dickie did a fantastic. You know the uh, he he took it from there. You talk smooth and steady. You know, you knew exactly what you got. He could run the offense. He could make the throws. Mm -hmm. I, I could not. And, uh, you know, he took them the rest of the way. And, and I'll get and to we that. Wound up beating the, I think we wound up beating the tar out of Cordell after that. It, it was 30-something. It was. Ron scored, Doug scored, and Mickey Saffold all scored. It was 35-20 was the, the win. Yeah, yeah. And I – I want to ask about did Dickie play any of those first three games prior to having to come in after your injury? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he played in the Ozark game. Mm -hmm. um, I'm. I don't know about Lanier. No. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I know he played in the Ozark game. And I. I guess there couldn't or wouldn't have been much communication between the two of y'all from the time you got hurt and left the game and he's coming in. I mean, you're in too much 
trauma, agony at this point, but you knew you were done at least for oh, that I, game. Going oh, I, I was done. Yeah. Now, did, did you have surgery after that game? Yeah. You know, this put it into perspective. They put me in the hospital. They scoped, they scoped my knee Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. And then I stayed in the hospital until the following Friday when they did my surgery. <laughs> and it was a ACL, uh, ACL, MCL reconstruction. Wow. And back in that day, you got a long leg bent knee cast with a hinge at the waist and a cast that went around my chest. And I had to wear that for six weeks. It, it, compared to what you know with an ACL now. And I just, when, when they cut that cast off, my leg was the size of my forearm. You know, uh -huh. it, it was just atrophied and stiff and, it, much, it was a tough. It was a tough time. How much did you weigh before the injury, and how much did you weigh after the cast? Uh, well, there's probably a thirty pound cast, uh, so I don't know. Um, and David, I want to talk just for briefly about the mindset of an athlete. The mindset, to me, you're a warrior. You don't think of injuries. If you do, you, you're going to get hurt. And particularly the position you're playing, you have to be fierce. And that mindset, and I know that's what your mindset was, but then your whole world gets rocked. Can you share a little bit about that, if, if you will, about the post-injury mindset of an athlete? Yeah, it, it's, it's hard. Um, and, you know, what I chose to do, and, you know, you, uh, I, I stayed, I went to every practice, you know, I'd sat out there and, uh, you know, would stay behind, stand behind the offense. Mm -hmm. um, and actually during the ball games, once I could get a rank, once that big cast came off, mm -hmm. uh, I actually went up and did the press box and got on the phones. Um, mm -hmm. I could sit there and see they're doing, you know, when we'd talk to Coach Andrews uh, on the phone and say that, you know, the, the slants there, what, whatever um so I, I stayed involved that way it would have been a lot more fun on the sidelines mm -hmm. but uh, at least i was involved well when you say on the sidelines i know you mean as a, a playing but could yeah. you were you mobile enough during that six week period or you would have been in, in jeopardy of getting re-injured or been in the way because you weren't very mobile if you'd have been on the sidelines yeah oh i was I, you couldn't it was it was a huge cast thing when i went back to school i was actually in a wheelchair for several weeks now, for guys, an ACL. That's, imagine that mm, that's that's 40 years ago i don't mean to, to put a date on you but yeah. now you're that injury now what's the post-surgical recovery like well it's it's you're fully weight bearing in a in a brace after and then you get your you get your range of motion back so you, so it doesn't get stiff and, you know, they're doing the, the surgery at two weeks post-op and walking around in a brace at four weeks, you know, and then, uh, it's a whole lot better than it was. Mm -hmm. Now in 1981, is that surgery a career ending surgery? Not, not, not for you. I mean, in general now, they're coming back and they're playing even later in the same season sometimes. Yeah, coming back at six to seven months, yeah. I, w I didn't even have my motion back at seven months. I still couldn't even bend my knee. Wow. Well, David, we, we you, you talked about being up in the press box, and I'm sure as a 12th grader, your season is now over, but you want to still be involved. And you may not recognize it as this, because I know that you're humble, but that's leadership because it had been very easy for you to not participate, to mope and to complain and whatever, but you didn't. You're helping the team in a different capacity. And I think that's unbelievably admirable for the starting quarterback to get that kind of injury and now have to watch from the sidelines. So I just say that as an aside, but I want to jump back in to now you're coaching Dickie somewhat, or you're at least helping. You may not feel like you're coaching, but you're show, you're the next set of eyes for him. 
Talk a little bit about the dynamics and communication between you and Dickey at this point. Oh, he, he was uh, receptive. Um, uh, and, and, and he, he did, uh, you know, he had a perfect record. <laughs> he was better than me. So, you know, he has, uh, he played it. He, he was very receptive to all of that. He was, uh, you know, not really apologetic, but, you know, he was, he, he was, uh, remember him saying, I wish you were playing. Well, I, I'm sure that was, that was quite, it probably wasn't very easy for him either. But he had the luxury, and poor Kendrick. Kendrick High School was never any good during the years they played us. That next week, Northview took care of business. It was 31 nothing. It was a, a pretty easy game. Then Pine Forest, I'm not going to run through them all, but I do want to get to the playoffs. And it's no joke, that juggernaut of teams that Ooh. the school had to go through in the playoffs and playing unbelievable talent. And I know you know this because it's your senior year, but you beat Dothan 10-3. It's final game of the year. But we open up with Murphy at home. And frankly, a lot of people say that was the state championship game. But then you come a couple weeks later, we got Jeff Davis. Yeah. So what what are well, – I know you're on the sidelines. Murphy, Murphy had Pat Washington. If yeah. I remember correctly, he threw for 280 yards in the second half. And we happened to get a pick in the end zone with with six seconds left to win that. I mean, it was a you're talking about a, a hair nail biter. Uh, and then uh, what was it, Murphy? And then Foley was next. Foley Foley was a little easier. And then yeah. Jeff Davis was. Uh, they missed a field goal. Mm -hmm. They had Curtis Stewart who played running back at Auburn. And the funny thing about that one, my my uh, medical school roommate, my fraternity brother Auburn, Tucker Maddox played played guard for Jeff Davis, mm -hmm. and uh, when we met, you know, up there at school and pledging, he goes, "You went to, you went to Northfield." Immediately gives me the big, you know, noogie on the arm, you know, because mm -hmm. we'd beat him. <laughs> and he said, "You know that that who was that? What's that? Roberts, eighty seven, number eighty seven. We had everybody left of the center, all three of them blocking him. That it was a three, they, they triple teamed, let everybody else free, just blocking him. Mm. Uh, and, and, you know, it's kind of fun when you get that kind of perspective, the respect mm -hmm. that they had for it. Yeah. And, and, uh, and I, I suspect that at least once since then, you've reminded Maddox who won the game. At least once. Well, no, least not two. No, it, 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 he still, he still sees over it. But you know, the funny one about that, the other thing that I remember about that is our coach, the professor, Coach Griffin, passed out on the sideline. I never he, heard that. That field goal. Oh yeah, blacked out cold. He hyperventilated and poof, he's on the sideline. So you know, here we won, and everybody's doing this, and they're saying, oh, you know. Coach Griffin's dead, you know, the whole, all that stuff. <laughs> but it, he was just hyper, but he was just excited. Oh, man. Oh, man. And Mike Turk was JD's yeah. quarterback, who obviously he was called the Troy State. When had a great career there. All right. And then that takes us to Carver, Birmingham, up in Birmingham at Legion Field. What was that for you? What was that like? That, that, that was interesting. You know, my, my funny thing about that is I remember that you know, everybody getting their Chuck Taylor tennis shoes to play on that hard AstroTurf, uh, mm -hmm. you know, or whatever kind of those shoes where they were, I think they were pretty terrible. But, um, and then the, the funny thing, and when you had Brent Gilbert on this show, mm -hmm. um, I kind of typed, typed in, you know, we had a fake field goal uh, play. And, and the, the trick was Larry Roberts was our long field goal kicker. Mm -hmm. And so he was going to come off to at the hash mark yeah. and tie, you know, he had a square toe shoe and tie up his shoe. Mm -hmm. And, um, well, we had a fake field goal set up where he was going to be over there tying up his shoe and we were going to quick snap throw and be faking tying up his shoe yeah. do a quick snap, throw it over to him and let him 
score a touchdown. Well, we, we did that during the game and it got blown up. Everybody on the team, some people tackled him, the ball, everything. And I was up there in the press box. And I said, how did they do that? That should have worked. It turns out Brent played ball at Auburn and one of the guys from Carver went to Auburn and they figured it out. And uh, the guy goes, hey, you know that fake field goal? His name was Demetrius Cotchery or something like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, so what had happened, that, and that was the worst offensive game we played all year. Every game we – every play we did just got nailed. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the staff at Legion Field, when we were up doing our walkthrough on Thursday afternoon, those coaches were in the press box and watched our entire practice. So, you know, we're sitting there going, why? The game was seven to six. Yeah. I mean, we, we barely, the only reason we won is they didn't have a kicker. But yeah. every play we tried, they, they, they just snuffed it out. And it turns out they had a, they watched our, <laughs> watched our closed practice. Wow. I had, I had never heard that, but you're right. I, I did watch the, the film that Miss C had thankfully saved. And it was not the team from earlier in the season from an offensive standpoint. Well, that, that, that's a little pearl there. Wow. Well, that, that play you're describing, I've often heard it's called the snake in the grass. Okay. You're not supposed to see him over there, but yeah, that, that got, got blown up. You're up in the press box. Time winds down. Was it Kershaw? I don't know who intercepted that pass late to seal the game, but then the game is over. What was that like as a graduating senior watching your teammates? Y'all are now state champions and largely, and, and I don't think it's close. It's the greatest season in Northview's history, 13 and one. It was, it was pretty cool. Um, there was a lot of, a lot of hugging and a lot of rowdying and running around with flags. And uh, it was, it was a, it was a memorable moment for sure. And it was big for the city of Dothan. It was the first state title for any of the, the football, you know, the public schools, even though Dothan had lost twice in a couple of seasons uh, prior to that. But it really just seemed, there was always school pride, but it just seemed to now set it to the next level. Did you, did you feel any of that your last semester in school? Oh, we thought we were kings. Yeah, it was, uh, we, we had a, we had an air about us around I told you about the little thing with Dr. Smith, but yeah, yeah it was it was a lot of uh, uh, a lot of pride in that. Well, as an incoming freshman, the next the next school term in '82, I can only tell you how just incredible it was from what was created by your class and that that team. A couple of last questions, David. I'll get you out of here, and I sure appreciate you sharing all these awesome memories and, and stories. And if you've got any others you want to share, I certainly want to give you the time. But, but one of my questions, did your injury and, and what you went through afterward, did that set you on a career path or had you already been thinking that that's where you were going to go to orthopedic surgery? I had a hunch that that's what I wanted to do. And then, uh, then I, then I, afterwards, uh, yeah, that, that kind of cemented it. It wasn't new to me at that point. I had spent a lot of time with Dr. Bill Hansen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, He's the one actually that did my surgery. Well, that's, what I was going to ask. I thought that that's who, who had done it. What does it mean to you now putting athletes back on the field who suffer similar type injuries how what has that been like it, it it's really gratifying um the kind of the neater part of it is what would what we how much better we are at identifying people that are at risk you know mm -hmm. the kids that have real mobile joints or real flat feet or um that that you can pick some of these stuff little subtle things up and have them in a therapy program when you're when we, we do an awful lot of uh physicals and stuff like that before the season there at southern bone and joint 
And uh, we can pick up the fact that they already have loose joints or they have some tendonitis or they, and we can get them into the rehab program and preventive stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's really kind of neat. You know, we didn't have any of that yeah. at all. Um, well, you didn't even and, have Gatorade. So what do you, how would you expect? Yeah, well, we had that, <laughs> that soup, honey soup, whatever. <laughs> David, two more two more questions, and I promise I'll get you out of here. And I really, really do appreciate your time and all of your your awesome memories and stories. And, and I guess the first one would be from the standpoint of from I've always heard Dr. Jimmy Andrews say that he has always thought that athletes should either rest between seasons or rotate sports, not be a specialist at such a young age. And along those lines, what are your philosophies about young athletes and overuse injuries? And, and what do you think, how should they handle their sports at, at young ages? And I mean, middle school and junior high and even getting into the high school ages. Well, funny you should say that because I, I actually have a, Miss, Miss Alfred and I have a fourth grade boy mm -hmm. and um, his name's Wiley. And um, he is just, started uh, actually just tried out for basketball mm -hmm. plays golf flag football and baseball and to that no and tennis um and to that you're you're exactly on what i feel is the right way to do that you know it, you there you don't know a what the true talent or love is going to be uh b Football, you can't play your whole life. Uh, baseball, you can't. Yeah, I mean, you can play softball later. You know, for, for the most part, the, that level of competitive sports is not going to be for everybody. Uh, but, you know, the golf, the tennis, those are year-long things. And uh, you do see people that, that tone in and just do travel baseball from fourth, sixth grade on. You know, think of all the stuff they're missing out on. Think of all the other teammates that they're missing out on because they're with their little 15-team travel ball players and they don't get to do the flag football and they don't get to – I do want to mention that. You know, that's something – that they probably didn't have that when you were growing up, the flag football league. That's huge here. It's We have that here and – um and we've been involved in, in the flag football uh, leagues. And uh, it's a lot of fun. And you get to play football without the contact. I think it's, uh, it's been a, a great thing for Dothan. And, and David, I know that Izell Reese from Northview went to UAB right. and the Cowboys has created an experience over at the Grandview uh, school property and I don't know if that's the same that you're referring to, but I know he's trying to bring more awareness to both boys and girls to being able to play on those types of, of games. Yeah, it's 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 a, I think it's a great thing. I really do. Well, David, I got one more question for you and, and we're going to cut you free. So thank you. I've always heard. That your high school years can be the best of times or the worst of times but they're always memorable. So my question for you, you've seen the mountaintop and you've also seen the valley with your injury. What was your high school experience? How, how do you, when you look back on it, not just with sports, but being at Northview, growing up in Dothan, what, what's your, your, your description of it for Wiley when he watches this sometime later? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, I think we were very, I was very fortunate. I think that we probably had uh, a nucleus of 15 to 20 guys and probably 15 girls um, that were just a pod. I mean, that we had fun together and uh, uh, cheerleaders, band, people in the band, the, um, the, the right the majorettes the uh managers the uh and just uh it was it was a fantastic experience socially uh academically from you know learning how to handle big crowds and uh big classes and uh 
and you know getting to have success on uh, both academically and on the football and baseball field. Um, you know, I, I'm very blessed and very thankful for my time at Northview. Very much so. Well, David, again, this is why I'm doing these. We're creating the oral history of Northview football and the program and some of what the school was like back in the day. And I want to thank you for spending some time with us tonight and sharing your story. It's been a real pleasure and an honor for me to have this conversation. So thank you. Well, you're welcome. I've enjoyed it. And thanks for everybody in, who tuned in. Absolutely. I've, I've really enjoyed this. Well, guys, we, we're going to keep doing these. I've got folks lined up through the end of the year. And as long as y'all are going to keep coming back, we're going to keep doing these until we, we talk to them all. I don't know how long that's going to take, but I'm enjoying it. So y'all continue to be safe out there. Keep coming back on Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock Central for conversations with Cougars. Y'all have a good night. Thank you.